The number one item I love to sell on eBay are shoes. Just have a look at these for a pair of Nike shoes. Oh my goodness. Because of the size, they were US seven and a half, but for $8 and they are in great condition, I had to grab them. You guys watch me pick these up in my trip to the thrift videos. You guys see me sell them on my What Sold episodes, but you've never actually seen the process as to how I go about selling the items. So if you're a brand new beginner to the reselling game, you wanna get into selling shoes online in 2021, this is gonna be a really good video for you because I'm gonna step you through the entire process of how to sell shoes this year. It's gonna be a fun episode, a lot to cover off. We're gonna go into a few things. I'm gonna show you what to look for in the thrift, what shoes are actually worth picking up. I'm also gonna show you how I quickly clean my shoes as well to get them ready for photos. I'm gonna show you the, how to find the style and the make of the shoe to really work out what it's actually worth. I'm gonna show you how I take my photos, how I list the item. I'm gonna show you also how to ship the item. So I'm trying to cover every single base when it comes to selling my shoes. So fingers crossed you get some value out of it. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Let's dive into the video. So if we break down my inventory list, I've got about 20 tubs of shoes here and they hold about 10 shoes per tub. So I've got about 200 pairs. I go pretty hard when it comes to selling my shoes. About 90% of the shoes that I have are not only men's, but they're men's active wear shoes. So really good here is the running shoe category That's, that sells really well. Football boots as well. Such a large focus on football boots. They just go on to sell super fast. And then I do buy everyday casual shoes as well, just like these Pumas here. They're not a running shoe. They're just an everyday use shoe, but they do go on to sell well for me. The category that I tried to get into was the dress shoes, but they didn't really return much of a sell-through rate, and I didn't really get a high profit either. So I've kind of stepped away from the dress shoe category, and I am just focusing on the three areas that I just spoke of. When it comes to size, I'm generally buying a size US 8 and above. I generally find that anything under a US 8 takes a little bit longer to sell. So I sort of avoid that by just going for a slightly faster sell-through and buying a slightly larger size. So a very very easy storage process, putting them into the tubs. Um, when the item sells, just come out and grab it, whack it into a satchel and I'm good to go. But men's shoes, men's active wear shoes, that's the focus and they do sell incredibly fast. All right, guys, I'll take you through my cleaning process. I use this Saad Wonder Power stain remover and I just put a light covering over every single individual shoe before I go ahead and put it into the washing machine. It just seems to have a better effect. Um, when I put it into the washing machine, I'm generally getting about five pairs of shoes. Uh, for this run, I've only got two pairs to do today. Uh, and then the settings that I use on my washing machine, it's literally just the quick 18 minute cycle. It's not a really rough cycle, it's quite a smooth. I always put the temperature really low to about 30 degrees and then I just put a light spin on it. So 18 minutes, we're generally pretty quickly getting them cleaned, which is a, a good thing. Um, I, I just put them outside in the sun. Um, this was yesterday's pair uh, that I've let dry overnight. Um, so I've got about 10 pairs of shoes to list today, but they've all come up really well. Um, the, the Saad Wonder Power has done a great job. Um, they've really cleaned up well, and we're pretty much in the process now to get these ones listed. So it's a very simple cleaning process. A few things that I look for when I'm buying my shoes, just to make sure that they are in good condition. And the first one can be a bit of a hidden one where I check the actual sole doesn't break away from the upper synthetic. If I do the test on this one that I've got here, you can see that there's a massive gap there. The glue has actually split away from the shoe. And therefore, this sort of shoe I actually wouldn't go ahead and purchase. The other thing that I also test as well is the sole. So as you can see here, there's a lot of tread left in that shoe. And this is basically the life of the shoe, is whether or not there's good tread or bad tread. And that determines the resale value. So this sort of a shoe here, it's actually got a really good tread left in it and there's a lot of life left in that shoe. So that would go on to sell really well. If you had it really flattened out and worn away, it wouldn't be worth as much. There wouldn't be much life left in the shoe. Um, the other thing as well is I check for synthetic tears. So making sure there's no tears or breakaways in the synthetic, um, pretty easy one to sort of self-determine when you're looking at the shoe um, off first go. And then the other one as well is identifying what shoe have you actually got? How do you know if it's a good or a bad shoe in the sense of how much it's worth? Well, there's a few things that you can test. One is obviously the name is often written on the tongue. You've often got details on the sole or the upper as well that sort of gives away what the make and the model of the shoe is. But if you've got absolutely no idea, if there's a shoe that just does not give you any information, you've often got something like this, which is basically where all the style code and information on the shoe is. There's the year of manufacturer right there. And then as well, there is your style number. That is the most important part. You wanna be making sure that you're putting that really small number. I know it's hard to see, 
but it's often about a nine digit number um, on a pair of running shoes that you can Google and work out exactly what the make and the model is of the shoe that you've got. From there, you can put that stuff into eBay and then you'll get a really accurate resale price before you even go ahead and purchase the shoe. So uh, a shoe like this, I wouldn't go and pick up only simply because of the breakaway in the sole, as you can see there. But everything else about this shoe would be worth going ahead and grabbing. Time to take some photos now, guys. Now, these box lights do an absolutely great job. I always use a white background. I find that both steps are incredibly crucial to taking really good photos. Um, there's a process here that I'll do before I go ahead. I always tuck the laces in to make sure they're not visible on the outside. And then I'll put something into the shoe to just kind of fatten out, uh, I guess, the, the drop that you often see where the toe is. So as you can see here, I've just put some uh, cardboard in there and that's been able to make it solid, which is what you want to be doing. Now, as for photos, there are six photos and these photos that you're seeing here, I take these six photos every single time. Things don't change when it comes to photos of shoes. It's just these same six angles and they seem to pretty much cover every single aspect of the shoe. If there's any sort of indiscrepancies or marks, I'll obviously hone in on that as well. But for these shoes, there was no real obvious damage. So I'm just capturing every single angle with the six photos that you're seeing here. And as you can see as well with the white background and obviously the box lights, it's actually a really nice photo, really clear to see. Um, that you can really see all the imperfections, which is what you want when you're taking your photos. All right, guys, so I've got my phone here. I'm going to take you through how I go about listing my photos uh, onto eBay and getting the listing correct. I'm, I've got my ASICS Dual Cumulus 15s that we've just taken those photos of. So that's the listing that I'm going to take you through now. Um, if we go into here and I'll show you my phone, I'll pull the screen up for you. To start your listing, you've got to put the title in. So it's an ASICS Dual Cumulus uh, 15. So that's the first thing that I'll do. Uh, it's a women's running shoe. I'll always write that there next. And then I'll put the size of the shoe, US. 6.5 and then I'll say it's in very good condition and then I'll always say free postage as well. So plus free postage to sound like it's an extra benefit. Um, so there it is there, the title is done. The next thing we have to do is uh, say that it is pre-owned condition uh, and then we go in and grab the photos as well out of the pre-selected photos that we've already taken. So we've got one, two, three, four, five and six. So we'll upload those photos. I always start with that side photo first. Um, I never do any background remover because I've already got a white background as you can see there. Um, so all of my photos are pretty much in order and ready to go with that side image being the major profile image of the, of the listing. Um, so once these photos have loaded, we then dive into the item specifics. And as you can see here, we've got a few to add in. They always do the brand as US for some reason. So I'm always having to go in and change that. Um, so I'm gonna clear the selected and I'm gonna type in ASICS. So ASICS there to get the brand right. There we go there with ASICS. Now the next step is once my phone loads, the size, I always write US instead of Australian. So US 6.5, put that in there. The color is pink. So find pink, there it is there. Uh, the upper material, I always write synthetic uh, for the shoes. I don't know whether that's right or wrong, but I generally just blanket it with synthetic for all of my listings. Sneaker as well. And then we come down to customized and we say no. Style code, style code's always on the tongue of the shoe. So if I have a look here on this pair of shoes here, we've got T, 3, C, 6, and N. So that's perfect. Um, now. US size six and a half, the UK size is a six and a half, and the Euro size is a 37.5. Um, so I'll put that as 37.5 as well. There it is there, all right. So the model, the model is a uh, gel cumulus 15, so I'll put that in there too. I don't fill out every single one of these um, item specifics, and to be honest, it's pretty much only a half listing once it's done, but it has gone on to sell for me in, in you know, a good space of time. So. I'm fine with what I'm sort of filling out here. I don't feel like I need to add in any more detail. Um, these are the ones that I'll always select in, in the performance activity. I'll go gym and training, running and jogging, track and field and walking. Um, pretty much gives a good indication of what the shoe actually is. Um, I leave all of these, as you can see here. Vintage, I'll always say no. UPC, I'll always say it does not apply. Um, UPC is basically the barcode of the shoe, so it doesn't often have a barcode, so I, I always say that. Uh, the closure is lace up. Um, and then really apart from that, features, I, I might sometimes go into features and just put something in like comfort. Um, occasion, this one's active wear, but it is also casual as well. So I'll always select those two. 
The pattern, I generally say pattern is solid, um, so I'm generally ticking that one there. Uh, and that's basically about it for the item specifics. So as you can see, we've got quite a number of specifics in there, which is always gonna help when it comes to the search of the person trying to buy these shoes. Um, I don't put anything in the description, which is um, gonna be debatable for some. I know a lot of people like to put something in there. I just leave it blanketed per the title because that's pretty much got every single bit of information that you would need to know about. So um, in the, uh, the pricing here, I've done my comp research and I know that I can go with the buy it now for $59.99. Uh, for these shoes and they will go on to sell well. Uh, I'll always put offers on as well So I'm going to tick that box and then I'll go into my postage afterwards and I'm going to select uh, I'm going to get another post here. I'm going to select uh, So we're going to go free post and the shipping will be just your standard post um, For the, the lowest price point International postage. I'm going to select that as well with standard international postage I'm going to put a flat rate of $35 for anywhere around the world, which is pretty much covering all bases uh, and then I'm going to put a local pickup on there as well. So pretty much now delivery is done both nationally and internationally. Um, I'm going to sell it faster by doing promoted listings at 2% as well. Just gives you a few more eyeballs, a um, few more people looking at your listing by doing a promoted listing and you will just pay 2% extra in fees. So I think a very small price to pay to get the item sold a little bit faster. Uh, and then we are done. I just hit list it and uh, the listing is now up and ready to be bought for $60 free postage i bought these shoes for five bucks so we should be making about a 30 dollars profit now that this guy is up and ready to be sold let's talk about shipping now very simple process one of the reasons why i love to sell shoes is i just personally whack them into a satchel and then send them off i don't do anything to the shoe itself it's literally just putting it into the correct size bag and getting it out the door so it's a very simple process I just use satchels. I pre-purchased these in packs of 100, cost me about 15 cents each, so I'm paying about $15. I've got the satchels here at the house. A shoe like this, which is only a US five and a half, a very small shoe, that'll very easily fit into a small satchel. So I'll send that one off. Small satchels cost you about $8.95 in shipping, so I'm always sort of wary of that when I'm doing my pricing. Um, I do free post on eBay. Um, so obviously $8.95 is accounted for. These are a slightly larger shoe, so that unfortunately they're not gonna fit into a small. If they could, I would, but um, a medium satchel will get the job done. So I just whack them in there, send it off. It's uh, $12.20 with Australia Post for a medium satchel. Um, with my Australia Post, my business plan, I get a bit of discount on every single size satchel. So the savings are quite good. Um, if you're thinking about getting into uh, the reselling game a little bit more seriously, I would look at the uh, Australia Post My Business Plan. It's all dependent upon how many items that you send off on a weekly basis, depends on how much discount that you actually get. Um, the one thing to be wary of, if you are doing international postage, it's all done on the weight. Um, so this one here, what have we got? A small satchel, um, so that'll be up to only 500 grams. So if any of these shoes goes over 500 grams in weight, and they could still fit in that satchel, you're still gonna to have to go up to a medium satchel or a large, depending on the shoe that you've actually got. So always be wary of that. These uh, Australia Post domestic satchels have got up to five kilos, so there's never a weight issue. But when you look at international, there's always a bit of a, a weight discrepancy to look at. Um, but that's it, there's nothing done to it. I don't put anything into the shoe. Um, they are quite durable, so that's probably the best part about the shipping aspect. You don't need to do much preparation when you put it in the post. You just whack it in a satchel, send it out. The most you'll probably pay around Australia is about 12 bucks. So that's everything guys, my A to Z guide of the process of how I go about selling my shoes. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully it motivates you to sell some shoes yourself. If there's any clarification that you guys need from today's video, any questions that you might have based on what you've seen, let me know in the comments below. I will be answering every single one. I really wanna do a few more of these how-to video series as well. I've obviously done shoes because they are my most favorite item to sell. But let me know in the comments, what category would you like me to dive into next? And I'd be more than happy to send you uh, the step-by-step -step guide in another video. Um, so so let me know that in the comments. But apart from that, guys, if you're still here watching now, I cannot thank you enough. You mean the world to me. Uh, thank you very much for your support. And uh, until the next video, we'll see you then.